209 here, and here's an oldie. So, you know, I was talking to uh, uh, my boss at work and uh, talking about, you know, maybe trading a couple of guns in. And I forgot I had this gun. <laughs> this gun right here. This is the Taurus PT-709 Slim. It's a single stack gun. We're living in the best age of firearms. Back in the day, if somebody needed a gun, they'd always turn to high point. Then Taurus started coming out with some guns uh, that were around that price point. And these are one of those guns. I think I picked this gun up for about $199 on some kind of sale or something like that. So it was affordable. And it's a lot better ergonomically than a high point. And it's way more concealable as you can see how slim it is. Unlike the high point which is a boat anchor. So this was one of the options that you could use if you were in a pinch and you need a firearm if something was going on in your life. Um, this gun for me has been reliable. Now I've talked to quite a few guys off the internet. Uh, you probably know them. Um, and they had horror stories about this gun. I never had that problem. But yet, if you look at my Sky CPX2, that gun almost fell apart. And then I had troubles with the SD, the Canic kind of you know i think it's sorted itself out here uh recently uh but you never know what you're gonna get that's why i like taking these guns out right out of the box taking them out shooting them see what i'm in for sometimes there is i guess they call it a break-in period for firearms uh most of the guns that i've had i've taken them out of the box and they've shot well and i've never had to do some kind of break-in uh, I've always gotten to a round count that I felt comfortable where I'm like, okay, I can carry this gun every day. I can slip it into the rotation. Uh, so this was one of the options, you know, pre Coco uh oh, uh, that you could go with. A lot of people, again, run to the high point. These guns were out there. Now, again, Taurus at that time, they were, they were suspect on their, uh, reliability their quality control wasn't the best but ever since they got new ownership and they have people that are actually technically riding that ship uh they have become really a, a, a bold-faced uh choice in the market today uh, i tell people every day uh that look at firearms we are in the best age of guns uh, look at all the new stuff, all the new technology that's coming into play, and you're and you can buy this stuff stock right off the shelf at your local uh, FFL. Unlike these guns, where this was a little bold for that time, you know, it's it's a smaller capacity, it's in nine millimeter. Yeah, it's going to be a little snappy, but most of those guns are even the the Hellcat and the Sig 365 that I own. It's a tad bit snappy, but. You, you're getting capacity with those guns. You're getting better triggers with those guns. You're getting better sights with those guns. Again, we're living in a great age of technology for fire, especially handguns. Uh, this was just one of the old options that were out there. Uh, just to give you a, a little comparison there, I bought this gun, like I said, for $199. I was at a local uh, a couple days ago, and they had a high point. That thing was sitting around two. I think they wanted two twenty-five, two thirty, or something for that gun. Uh, so again, we're still seeing elevated prices in my area, fifty to a hundred bucks. Uh, so you can you can tell this is this is way back in the day uh, where the world wasn't so crazy. But if you needed an option to carry a handgun, this was a great option to do it. I even had a holster uh, outside the waistband made for this gun. And back, again, back in uh, uh, pre uh, Coco uh -oh days, people didn't really carry uh, uh, outside the waistband. And if you did, people didn't care. They just didn't care. They, they didn't freak out like they're freaking out today because of morons that do uh, horrible deeds or just stupid people. Um, now it's a little bit, a little bit harder if you look at it. You know, some states they don't have open carry or they don't have concealed carry or they don't have both because you can't get a permit. I mean, you can see how far we've come with firearms uh, technology wise, but then see it kind of drift back with gun law, anti-gun laws. Uh, so, I mean, again, the balance shifts and it shifts with firearms, especially in the dramatic uh, steps a lot of people are taking in today's market, you have uh, the Max 9, you have 
the Hellcat, the 365, and now Smith & Wesson is coming out with the Shield Plus. Uh, that's hitting shelves. And again, you're buying these right off the shelf. Back in the day, to carry a couple extra rounds, you had to get these extensions. You had to get a magazine extension. Uh, you, didn't, you couldn't buy that stuff right off the shelf. Uh, so you youngsters. Uh, this was... Uh, this is a magazine that I've, I had a little bit of trouble with. Uh, again, it's a pro mag. Uh, I don't. I <laughs> I highly recommend <laughs> highly recommend that you don't buy pro mag stuff. Uh, this was just in case last ditch effort <laughs> type of deal. But if you had bigger hands back in the day, uh, this would allow you to give you a bigger grip on the firearm. Uh, again, carrying it, you know, you're gonna you know, print a little bit more with that firearm. Uh, it did come with a uh, seven round mag. You can carry with uh, uh, one in the chamber that give you eight rounds, but it does have a pinky extension on there, as you can see there. So you can get a full purchase on the firearm. For me, I don't have huge hands. So the ergonomics are pretty good uh, with this firearm for the most part for the technology that we're seeing. Uh, again, taking it down, just make sure you don't have anything in there for you freaks out there. Look, it's not even dirty. Uh, again, I haven't checked this gun in so long. It just takes down just like a Glock. You just whip it off. Boom. And it comes apart. Look, it's pretty clean in there. Uh, and then you just slip it back on the rails. And you're back in business. Uh, that's the one thing that I didn't quite get with Ruger and some of these other guys. I don't know if they were trying to think too hard outside the box. But they always had this pin system, especially for Ruger's. But the bad thing is, if you lose those pins, you're screwed. I mean, you'll have to order a new pin, and then if that's your only gun to carry, uh, then you're out of carry gun until that pin comes in there, because that pin was the, the end-all, be-all to keeping your slide on. So, uh, why more people don't go to the, the two-tab pull-down system like Glock and some of these other guns that are coming out here uh, have... I don't know. Some people have talked about how that can malfunction. The tab could break off. That's never happened with me. I'm not saying it has, but uh, um, anything's a possibility. Uh, but I've never had that problem. And now, uh, I just showed you the gun is clear. The trigger pull on this gun is heroic. It's gross. It's it's gross. It's horrendous. It's atrocious. It, any, any kind of uh, ad hominem that you want to put in there. Uh, crap. Because there's tons of take up on there. Look at that. Before it hits the wall. Right there. And then it breaks. The reset isn't too bad. Right there. And then it's all the way out. So it's not too bad on the reset. Uh, it does have second strike capability. Like uh, the old uh, the old Taurus pistols. PT-111s and the PT-111 G2s. Still has that capability in there. And then... Technology's carried on to what we see today that Taurus puts out, which is, eh, I I don't mind it. I mean, I if if you have a dud round in there, you know, uh, it'd be good to try and strike it again and and see if it'll go out before you start uh, ejecting rounds out of there. Uh, another feature for this that I see maybe for a good first time firearm for someone is the people that don't like to carry with one in the chamber. Uh, a lot of people, they just don't like to do it. They're, they're especially new people because they're afraid of the gun going off. Trust me, with a lot of these guns nowadays, it's going to take a lot of force uh, to pull that trigger and have the gun go off in your pants. It's been done before. Trust me, a lot of people drop their guns and they go off. Uh, but this one has a safety feature on there. So uh, if you put a round in the chamber, uh, you can just flip that safety on right there. And that should, you know, ease the mind a little bit. Uh, when I first started carrying this gun, uh, when I when I met the threshold of rounds uh, put through it that I, okay, I can carry this gun, it's going to be reliable, I would flip the safety on, you know, put a round chamber, flip the safety on. Sometimes I wouldn't carry with the safety on it. Uh, a lot of people don't like safeties on their guns. Um, Glocks only have uh, the trigger shoe in there and, and a lot of the other guns. Uh, so that's a little feature for you. What these guns go for today, I don't know. I, I Again, I forgot about this gun until today that I had it. Um, I, I'm not sure. I, I don't think it's going to be outrageous. Do I think you're going to be paying a little bit more than what I paid for it? Or than other people paid for it way back when? Yes, probably every gun has gone up 50 to 100 bucks. Uh, especially in my area. I don't know how your area is. Um, 
Again, I've heard some horror stories about this. The only thing that I had a problem with is the last time, a uh, long, long time ago, I took this gun out and shot it. Uh, the loaded chamber indicator that's here on the top of the firearm, you can see it here, this little slot here, that broke. And I'll show you. See how that's up now? But there's nothing in the there's nothing in the gun, as you can see. So there's some some in there went on, but other than that, uh, I, I remember that day because I was like, oh God, you know, here we go again, another lemon, uh, and took it out back and shot the heck out of it. Put another couple of magazines through it, and no problems. We can go back out and shoot this gun again. I'm kind of miss shooting it and uh, give it a go and, and see if that's still a, a problem or an issue. Uh, again, you should always check your firearms. You should always check your firearms, make sure they're not loaded. Uh, all the safety uh, that comes along with uh, that aspect. For me, I don't know, man. I, I, I like this gun. It was one of the uh, first guns that I got when uh, I started really concealing carrying a firearm. Uh, I just think it's past its prime. I carry a 365. I carry a CZP-10C. You know, I carry Smith & Wesson Shield at times. So I think technology, you know, it's always uh, a, a one up, a leg up. Every every year we see it. Every couple of years we see new technologies hit the market. And nowadays, with the, all the new technologies like flat face triggers and all that, uh, you can just buy that stuff off the shelf. It used to be back in the day, you have to buy uh, parts kits or some kind of upgrade. Now that stuff's coming straight out of the box. So. I mean, again, it's a, it's a cool little gun. It's a neat little gun. It's worked for me. I know it hasn't worked for some people in the past. But for me, uh, this is a gun that I can say, yeah, man, I'd carry this gun around. Even though it's got that little uh, doohickey up there, the load ch chamber indicator that's messed up. Other than that, I don't, I don't see a problem with this gun. Um, will it stay? Probably not. Uh, I've been looking at other guns that are on the market, and I want to kind of rework my carry rotation. Um, I've been carrying a lot of my revolvers here lately and I, I like carrying them just because of the concealability of a revolver. Uh, it, it's just a little bit better. And plus I have a SIG 365, which is easy peasy to carry. Uh, so I think there's just better guns out there with a little bit more capacity, a little bit more upgrades to them than these older guns that, that I still hold on to today. So this one might go by the wayside. It might get a couple of bucks for it. I was looking at a Gen 5 uh, Glock 26 the other day. Really want a Glock 26. I really like that gun. I've shot them in the past. And I'm like, oh, i got to get me one of those. Um, yeah, they're plain Janes. But I, again, for, for my conceal and carry rotation, I think that would fit in well uh, with, with where I need that gun to be at. Um, I So for me, I don't go off and just buy guns to buy guns. I buy guns that I know I'm going to beat to death, that I know I'm going to use, that I know I'm going to carry for years upon years. Uh, I just don't go buy guns because it's the new fad. Um, but in all, in all, if you come across one of these guns and it's not totally expensive, I'd give it a shot. You know, you could always take it to your local and, you know, you're never going to get what you put into it, but you can get a couple of bucks back and try again in the future. Um... I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But for now, it served its purpose. I think I think it's time to move on. And we'll see what, what it, the future holds uh, with what I get out of this gun. And uh, we'll go find something else to uh, mess around with. With all that being said, I'd like to thank my old and my new subscribers and just the people that zip through. I greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell for more notifications. Do that for everybody that you watch on YouTube. It helps with the algorithm. With all that being said, like always, guys, we'll catch you on the next one.